Hey everyone, it's Jen O'Malley Dillon. So excited to kick off what's going to be a weekly conversation with all of you guys. We really just wanna make sure that we give you an update on what we're doing, what's going on, how we're thinking. Um, Beto's been out on the campaign trail doing a phenomenal job. He's going all across this country and places where, you know, not all candidates go, especially presidential candidates, to win this race, to fix our democracy, to um, move this country forward. We really need a new kind of politics, a new way to do business. And part of that is bringing people in that haven't been prioritized before. Just last week, um, is it last week? When we were in Virginia. All right, so that's a fuck up. <laughs> so just last weekend, Beto was traveling all across Virginia and he went to a place called Bland County. And it is a county that uh, is the most Republican county uh, in Virginia, the place where um, Trump had more votes than anywhere else in the Commonwealth, um, and a place where no presidential candidate has ever shown up. Okay, that's great. You're going to places where nobody else is going, but why? Don't you have to be in early states? And what does Virginia have to do with it? Well, Virginia is a super Tuesday state. In order to get on the ballot, to get Beto's name on the ballot to run for president, you have to uh, get petitions signed all across the state. You also have to get them signed in different, all the congressional districts. We've already gotten the threshold that we need and we're really excited about getting that work done. Just gives you a little bit of a sense of how we think about Beto's schedule, how we think about what we're doing out there and how where we're going matters both to the campaign we're running but also to our overall strategy. If you take when we were in Arkansas and he went to a gun show the day after he talked about how we have to um, ban assault weapons, that you cannot handle the urgent crisis that is facing this country um, by just saying we'll take off assault weapons off our streets in the future. You have to be able to deal with the ones that are on the uh, on the streets now. First person to put a plan out, first person to sign March for Our Lives plan, only presidential candidate to sign the March for Our Lives plan that calls for a mandatory buyback of these weapons of war. Gun owners also understand this challenge, also want weapons of war off the streets. So, Obviously, a big day today, debate day. It's really easy to overhype the debate. There's only gonna be 10 minutes uh, that any candidate probably gets to speak. Um, but what you're gonna see in Beto is what you've been seeing every day. Someone who is um, direct and honest, someone who is gonna tell you exactly how he feels. You're gonna find the same guy that's uh, you know been a leader in Texas, that's leading on issues like guns and immigration, healthcare. A few other things I just wanna leave you with, things to be looking at and, and um, thinking about in the days ahead. Unfortunately, after the shooting in Odessa and Midland, bots uh, online started spreading rumors that the uh, shooter uh, was a Beto supporter, had a sticker on the back of his car, which, you know, as if this tragedy isn't horrible enough and we should do anything but focus on the families and the people impacted. We even saw Trump uh, advisors and supporters, uh, official Trump people um, and staff spreading that online. Tens of thousands of people were thinking something about the shooter that was completely true. Not one ounce of truth in it. That's bullshit. Like we cannot let that happen. This disinformation is what happened in 2016 with so many of us saw firsthand with Hillary Clinton. Campaigns really have no power to, ha to do anything on their own. It's the platforms themselves that have to police. Hey Twitter, hey Facebook, hey Google, you guys have to solve this. It is not our responsibility. We're gonna tell everyone what's happening. We're not gonna hide this. The way to solve for disinformation is being transparent and honest about it. Last thing I wanna leave you with, we laid out our plan for what we can do right now and we need your help. Everyone has a responsibility to get these weapons of war off our streets. Looking at private companies, looking at credit card companies and financial institutions that are doing business with manufacturers of these weapons of war. They can today say, you know what, we're just not gonna do it. Or in fact, you need to have a background check uh, for anything that you're selling, any weapons of war that you're selling, or, or we're not gonna be your financial institution. We need your help to call them out. Our entire campaign is gonna be focused over the next several weeks on how we can continue to raise the voices of the people and the families that have been hurt here, that have been victims, but also what we all can do to not just wait till the end of this process, but to take action now. That's, that's it for me. This is our hope that we can just keep having these conversations bring you closer and closer into what we're doing every day. We are so proud to be part of this thing with you. Make sure if you haven't seen it, check out our email today, check out our social media. Lots of people reach out to me on Twitter. Please keep doing that. Our path is starting to climb and we can feel it in all of our metrics. We're gonna continue to see that. Um, and just so proud to be part of this with all of you guys. So 
Great to connect with you this week. Stay tuned for more of these. Can't wait to keep doing this and see you uh, out there.